Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the shop. Well, I'm back at it again. More modifications here to the shop. You know, oftentimes and not, I get projects in here that are heavy and big and awkward, and they're hard for me to lift them up on the welding table. You know, my capacity of lifting a normal sized object is around 100 pounds. Anything more than that, it's just too heavy for me to get around. And oftentimes I get projects that maybe not weigh 100, but, but 50 pounds are just awkward size. And it's still hard to maneuver and get up, and it takes a couple people to get it up on the welding table. Well, for the most part, I'm here in the shop by myself, and it's just hard to get things around. And my wife, she's not really capable of helping me, nor my daughters, because these things are heavy. And I don't have a guy around to help me do this kind of stuff. So what I was looking around for and I found on Amazon was this truck crane. Now this thing is designed to bolt to in the back of a truck bed. And uh, I thought that with some modifications, we'll be able to make this thing work on the end of the welding table down there. And it's going to give me what I need to lift some objects up onto this table, I think, is what I'm hoping for anyway. What we've got here is we've got an adjustable mass, this thing here, or I should say boom. Uh, this thing goes from about three feet to about five and a half feet. And at the three feet, they tell you it lists about 2,000 pounds. Next notch up is about maybe four feet, and that gives you about 750 pounds. And the full extension is five and a half feet. And they say at five and a half feet, you can lift 200 pounds. Well, that's about I don't think I'm gonna be lifting much more than anything more than 200 pounds around here. So I think that's what I'm, I'm going for. So it also comes with 3,000 pound winch right here capacity. I did make some upgrades on this. Uh, this is a 12 volt system. I went ahead and got a uh, 110 to 12 volt inverter right here so I can plug it into the outlet that I have on the end of the table down there. And I upgraded this switch. They had a kind of jankity switch that came with this and upgraded this switch with some longer leads that's going to allow me to be more versatile around the area moving this thing around when I need to. So I think this is going to be a good addition to the shop. So let's get started. Today's video is sponsored by King Metals. They've got all your fabrication needs in one location. From hinges to hardware, balusters to metal decor, brass to aluminum, and a whole lot more. You name it, they've got it. Check them out today at kingmetals.com. Now let's get back to today's video. Okay, so here's where I'm uh, liking to mount this thing. Somewhere right in about right here. And uh, this will allow this to flex out five and a half feet in this direction, five and a half feet that direction, all the way around 360 degrees. And uh, I think when it's swung out of the way, I, I, I don't, utilize this part of the table too often so I think I'm going to be okay and if I'm not it's just going to be four easy bowls and I'll be able to just lift this thing off for whatever I need but uh, I think it's going to be a pretty cool spot for this thing and this is uh, what I think I'm going to do so in order to, to make this work this thing has a 3 8 thick plate and it's about an 80 inch base plate right here okay does not line up with the bolt pattern that I have so what I've got here is I've got a piece of half inch thick plate, 12 inches by 12 inches. I've marked the spore holes that match this pattern right here. We'll drill those out and countersink it from the back side. And then I've got four other holes in different locations that line up with the pattern right here that's gonna have this thing fit right on the very corner like that. So the first stop is to drill this thing out and then we can start assembly. Let's get started. All right, we're gonna start drilling some holes into this plate right here. Before we get started, I want you to check out the new addition to the shop right here. This is the uh, Champion AC42. Um, very, very brute. It's uh, very because it's variable speed. This thing has got a couple of different options to it. And not only does it do annular cutting, but also it's got a half inch drill chuck right here you can put in here for drilling and also this tap chuck right here that can be put in you can be doing for tapping. The variable speed allows you to turn it way down for tapping and drilling and up for angular cutting. Uh, pretty handy little thing to have. It's got this lubrication container on the side if you choose to use it. I've got a couple of these things here in the shop. These things are very handy to have, especially when you're trying to drill precise holes like I'm trying to do right here. And uh, they're pretty handy. So let's go ahead and put this thing to work. 
Yeah, so mag drills are a must to have in a, in a fab shop, that's for sure. You know, I've got a couple of these. I've got also have the mini brute as well. It's for more smaller, compact, and more, um, you know, vertical areas as well. It's pretty cool tools to have. They work really well, and, uh, you know, especially for drilling holes, stuff like this is just ideal. Now, you might see the oiler on the side of this. Uh, I've got a couple, like I said, i got a couple of these drills that have uh, the oilers on the side, and, and they work okay, but I prefer to uh, just manually put the oil on. I can get a lot more oil on there as I as I need it. But uh, outside of that, this thing is working uh, really well. Just like that, four really clean holes. All right, you know, so I need to countersink these things for these bolts right here. And my first thought was, okay, I'll just put it in my drill right here, and I'll just go ahead and, and countersink it like this. Well, I quickly found out that uh, it took a lot of energy and a lot of time. And you got to remember, this is fat. This is sped up a little bit. <laughs> so, I mean, this took a lot just to get to this right here, and I realized that this is not going to work. So, you know, my other option was to set it up in the mill, and I was trying to avoid that, you know, because it takes time to get things set up and get things adjusted to, to, to make everything work. But, hey, ultimately, that's what I decided to do. So over here at the KBC, once everything is all set up, no problems at all drilling these things right through. It only took a matter of seconds to get this thing countersunk down to where it needed to be. So, you know, the, the 15, 20 minutes it took to set everything up, uh, was well worth it you know and the idea of countersinking them like this if you haven't figured it out is uh, this plate is going to be mounted uh, to the uh, to the to the mast of this crane and I can't have to have these bolts uh, flush or recessed in this plate because this plate is going to mount flush to my welding table that's the idea of getting these things uh, countersunk in here And it helps to have a nice sharp bit as well. You can see how this thing just hogged right through that material. No problem at all. And just like that, all four holes are done. All right, so back to the uh, mag drill here. And I'm drilling the four holes that are actually going to be mounting to the welding table. And uh, the holes are half inch, and I'm drilling 9 16 holes right here, just a 16th over uh, nominal size here, just to give me a little bit of flexibility. And just like that, nice drill. All right, just cleaning up, deburn them, deburning these holes and cleaning them up. All right, so now for the assembly right here. Um, I don't know what this thing is, some sort of a handle that was came on it. I, I really don't know what the purpose of that is. Installing the bearings, and uh, they were a loose fit. Now, I got this thing on Amazon, all right? <laughs> and, you know, it, it for the most part, it's okay. If you're handy like me and you're able to make some modifications, which I had to do, um, you know, everything is going to be okay. But, boy, I tell you, it's just... Uh, uh, things were just not exactly the way I, I was hoping they would be, but what do you expect? All right, so I got everything put together here, and uh, it seems to be okay. And I like that little lever here to crank it down to tighten it up. And now it's time to get the plate on here. And this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, get the bolts in the right way. And this is what I'm talking about right here to uh, recess those bolts in so they're uh, inside a flush to the plate right there. And uh, just tightening them up, getting everything nice and tight. And you can see how they fit on there nice and flush or inside a flush. So I, here's the here's the cable situation here. They got all these, you know, the, the cables and the, and the wire that's all loose like this. And, and I just couldn't deal with it because I'm going to have a couple of them mounted to the winch at the top, a couple of them mounted to the, the um, inverter at the bottom. So I decided I'm going to run these wires inside of this tube. So I've got my extra long drills right here. That was a pilot hole. And then this one there right here is a half inch. And I needed that extra long to reach through there. And uh, there it is. I got that drilled out and I was able to fish this cable. That's going to work through there. And now all I got to do is uh, drill it through the tube itself. And that's what I'm doing right here. 
I'm just going to drill me a pilot hole right here, right near the bottom of the mast. And then I'm just going to grab the reamer. And boy, these reamers are amazing. And you just uh, quickly open that hole up right to the right size, just like that. That's all I really need. And then a snake to go through the other end and get it up there to pull that cable through the inside of the tube. I thought about this for a long time, trying to figure out how I'm going to get it done. And, and, uh, and this worked out perfect. All right, back to reassembly again. I'm going to like this. This, this, this is a lot cleaner uh, situation than what I would have had by having those uh, the wires just loosely fitting all over the place at the top. I just didn't like that scenario. All right, here we go. Stand this thing up. Line the plate up on the very corner. And then just four half inch bolts. And just run them right down just like that. And that's nice and secure. All right, for the mass, this goes on just like this. Now you might see I changed the cable out. Uh, Use the, uh, I got rid of that steel cable and uh, ordered uh, uh, this rope. Uh, I'm not certain of the name of it uh, on Amazon, but this thing holds like, uh, like 9,800 pounds of pressure, which I thought was uh, good. And I like the way it's really flexible and loose and it didn't have any sharp edges. I had some sharp edges on that cable that actually cut my fingers uh, prior to assembly here, so I got rid of that and got this uh, got this uh, winch rope on there as well. That thing worked out nice. Now I could have taken it a step farther, and I might down the road. But uh, you see how that cable comes on the outside there and hooks up to the winch. I could have actually drilled through the uh, for the boom itself right near the top and went down through the top. But then I would that wouldn't have been I wouldn't have been able to remove the the boom for any reason. So um, you know I just kept it just like just like that for now. And for the bottom, this is what I did right here. I made a connection where I can just plug it in and plug this in. And then now I've got this, uh, so, you know, the, the controls, they worked uh, nice and smoothly. And I don't have those wires hanging all over the place. All right, so just like that, I think we're almost done. And uh, we're testing everything. Everything is working pretty good. And here's an example. This is just a piece of equipment that I have. I want to do... Uh, service this or work on it this thing here weighs a couple of hundred pounds for sure and i'm on the medium extension on the boom and it lifts it up no problem and then of course it swings over really easy and i was able to uh, get that up and off the table no problem here's just another angle of up and on and disconnect it and swing that out of the way and then when you're done just hook right back up again up over and back down where it needs to be on a stand and just like that you know it's a really cool addition to the shop right there that's going to work out i'm not going to use it all the time but uh when i need it i need it and it was a fun little addition hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one see you next time on jimbo's garage